Fellas, it's time for another long video that you can just listen to in the background while you're escaping. Today, I want to talk about achievement diaries. Are they worth your time? The short answer is yes, but let's take a look at some rewards and see how they rank on a tier list. Okay, this one has a lot of entries, so this is going to be a very long video. As is tradition, let me know what you're working on in-game. I'm very curious to read them all. Someone exposed me last time saying that I only asked this question so I can get more comments on the video. And while that is true, the main reason I asked that question is so that I can know what I should make videos about. Like, what is the point in me making some niche endgame content when none of you are even touching it? But with my housekeeping out of the way, let's get into the tier list. How this is going to work is I'm basically going to go through each tier. So I'm going to do easy, medium, hard, then elite. I'm going to talk about the reward for each tier as well as the most annoying task for each like diary itself. And of course, since we're starting with easy tier, I kind of need to preface that the easy tier automatically gets more points than the medium and the hard tier because it gives you the item. Like without completing the easy tier, you would not be able to get any of these items. Therefore, its reward is just inherently more valuable. But with that out of the way, let's just start ranking them. This is already going to be so long. Let's just start talking and get to it. The first one is the Ardoin Easy Diary. This might be the best easy diary just because of how good its reward actually is. The requirements are really low. You just need like five thieving and a couple quests like Biohazard and Rune Mysteries. For completing this, you get the Ardoin Cloak 1, and this gives you unlimited teleports to the monastery. This is very big for a very long time. This is pretty much your teleport to a fairy ring until you get one yourself or a quest cape, or I guess a POH teleport to the South Graveyard. You also get a lamp for 2,500 experience at any skill above 30. You get double death runes from trading in cats, which is pretty big for Iron Men, but I think most mains don't really do that. And the Jubster and Frog Eel drops will be noted in the Tower of Life. The most annoying task for this one is probably just getting a sword identified because there is a chance you'll get nothing. Uh, this diary is very, very easy. Uh, and the reward is very, very good. This is like a must do diary. If you don't do any diaries on your account, this is one that you should do. Uh, this one goes in S. This is probably the most important diary you can get for a very long time. Next is the Desert Easy Diary. This one requires level 21 thieving, level five hunter, completion of Gertrude's cat, and a little bit of Iklerthre, I can never say that name's little helper. The rewards are the Desert Amulet one, an antique lamp for 2,500 experience. The Pharaoh Scepter can now hold up to 10 charges. Goats will always drop noted desert goat horns. And Simul Templeton will now buy your noted artifacts as well. Uh, I guess that that's kind of nice, but it's, again, it's not really something you really do all that much, especially as you progress your account. I don't think this amulet does that much, does it? I don't think this tier gives you a teleport. I could be wrong, but I think it does have a teleport option. So I think it just gives you kind of the rewards. This one, not that great if I'm being honest. This is probably one of the weaker ones. I would put it in D, but because it unlocks the amulet itself, uh, for now it's just gonna go in C. Next is the Falador Easy Diary. This one requires 16 construction, five agility, 13 smithing, and 10 mining. It also requires Doric's quest and the Knight's sword. The reward for this one is the Falador Shield one, and this can restore 25% of your prayer once a day, an antique lamp for 2,500 experience, and it gives you access to the tight gap shortcut between the Chaos Temple and Burthorp. That shortcut is kind of useful. You use it like very sparingly, like you kind of use it if you forget where you're going or like you think you're going the fastest way but you're not the prayer restore i guess could be kind of nice the shield gets a lot better in the elite tier but it's like a free prayer potion sip every day uh it's okay it's obviously better than the desert amulet but overall not that great the most annoying task is probably smithing blurite limbs just because it's kind of like obscure but not very hard to do you could do this very very quickly uh, I think this is kind of just meh. It's just kind of there for now. I think for the Falador Easy Diary, we go in C, just above the Desert Amulet. Next is the Fremenic Easy Diary. 
This requires 5 thieving, 23 crafting, 11 hunter, 20 mining, 20 smithing, 15 fire making, 15 wood cutting, completion of the Fremenic trials, and having at least started the giant dwarf and the troll stronghold. The rewards for this diary are the Fremnik Sea Boots 1, and these give you one free teleport to Relica every day, as well as an antique lamp for 2500 experience. Pier the Seer will now act as a bank deposit box, and Foss Grimen will give your enchanted liar an extra charge when making a sacrifice. The liar is an interesting item. It's not really used that much. It is the fastest way to get to Nate is not and Yat is so. I think it's seen a little bit more use ironically just because of forestry makes people teleporting to the arctic pines uh that's kind of nice but charges aren't really that crazy for a liar especially because you don't use it that often the bank deposit box is kind of nice i'm trying to think of like where that might be viable the only thing i can think of is if you're like if you're stealing from stalls in the in a uh, relica but it doesn't really seem that useful the teleport is nice but at the end of the day, you could just move your POH to Relica and it's kind of useless. Uh, it's an easy diary, right? So it, its benefit really comes from just getting started and unlocking that item. Uh, I, again, I'm going to put this one in C, but again, above the previous one. The most annoying task for this is, again, very hard to choose. Uh, it's probably either killing five rock crabs because it takes you a little bit of time to kill five of them or catching a cerulean twitch. Uh, yeah, it's... A, Pretty, pretty easy diary. Next is the Candor and Easy Diary. This requires 20 agility, level one crafting, which everybody should have, 16 fishing and 13 farming. There are no quests required for this diary, but you do need to have at least started Elemental Workshop one. The rewards for this one are the Candor and Headgear one, this functions as a light source, like a permanent light source that cannot go out. This one is very, very good for that. And also, while worn, it gives you double logs from normal trees, which is something that I don't think you'd ever really use, but maybe there's a situation you could use that in. It also gives you 2,500 experience in an antique lamp. The coal trucks can now hold up to 140 coal. The flax keeper will exchange 30 noted flax for 30 noted bowstrings every day and you will get 5% more Marks of Grace from Sears Village Rooftop. This is a, a big step up for the Easy Diary. This is one of the better Easy Diaries. It's not as good as the Ardoin Cape, uh, but it is very good. Personally, I think this is one you want to get done. 5% more Marks of Grace is nice, especially when you get to that point. The Light Source is probably the big one. Uh, so I'm going to put this in A. This is a another one that you should do if, you, if you've never done your diaries. Let's start with these two. The most annoying task for this one is probably defeating one of each elemental in Elemental Workshop, just because you have to start Elemental Workshop, make your way all the way there, and then kill four of them. Uh, nothing in this diary is that hard to do, and I think most people could probably do this right now if they haven't already. Up next is the Karamja Easy Diary. This one requires 15 agility and 40 mining. 40 mining might be the biggest requirement for any achievement diary, but I'm not entirely sure about that. There are no quest requirements for this, and you don't even need to have started an, any quests. The rewards are the Karamja Gloves 1. These ones are kind of interesting because while worn, the boat from Brimhaven to Ardoin and the boat from uh, Musa Point to Port Sarim will cost half of what they normally cost. They also give you the benefit of when you're buying or selling stuff in Tazar shops that they now cost less than they did before. They'll now sell you items for about 13% less than they cost and pay you a little bit more for when you sell it. This is especially good if you're an Ironman trying to get your first Onyx or you're a main account who just has a ton of Tockle. This one is weird. This was the first achievement diary added to the game, I believe. The antique lamp for this one only gives you 1,000 experience instead of the 2,500. This is another good one to just get done. The shop thing itself is kind of nice. I actually just used it recently and I'm a main account with a billion total experience. Uh, I spent all my tuckle just to get some money. So uh, this one is going to go into B for me. The most annoying task is obviously the mining task because it requires level 40. And this requires you to mine some gold in the Northwest Peninsula on Karamja. Nothing crazy, just a 40 mining requirement. The Karend in Kebo's Diary is up next, and this one requires 25 construction, 12 herblore, 25 thieving, 15 mining, and 20 fishing. 
It also requires the completion of Druidic Ritual, that is obviously because of the Herbler requirement, and you need at least 15% Hasidious Favor. The reward for this is Rada's Blessing 1. This blessing gives you 3 teleports to the Karen Woodland every day, and it also gives you a 2% chance to catch 2 fish at once everywhere when it's equipped. You'll also get an antique lamp for 2500 experience. The price for access to Crab Claw Island is halved. You get a double drop rate for Xerix Talisman, which is very, very nice. This does exclude stone chests, but not a big deal. You'll probably want to get it from Lizardman anyway. And you also get reduced tanning prices at Eoden in the Forthos Dungeon. This reduces his default price to 80%. This is another good diary. This was the newest diary added just because of how late Zeo was added to the game. This diary is pretty good. I'm gonna put this one in the B tier above Karamja Gloves. It's nothing super crazy. The teleport isn't that useful. It's kind of like just in an area you can kind of get to anyway. The 2% chance is nice, but it gets better as we go. And yeah, just some kind of nice rewards to have, but nothing super crucial. The most annoying task is probably stealing from a Hasidious fruit stall. This is because it needs 15% Hasidious favor and 25 thieving. It really shouldn't take you that long. This is not a bad diary to do. Following that up, we have the Lumbridge Easy Diary. This requires level five runecraft, level seven slayer, 10 agility, 15 mining, 15 fishing, 15 fire making, 15 wood cutting, the completion of cook's assistant and rune mysteries, and that is it. The rewards for this diary are the Explorer's Ring 1, which lets you cast low alchemy 30 times per day without runes, which is pretty nice, especially at a low, low level. And this ring also gives you 50% run energy twice a day, which is much better than its counterpart of the Varrock Shield, only giving you 25% of your prayer once a day. And of course you get your antique lamp for 2,500 experience. So some pretty nice rewards from this one. This is another one that I think you should just kind of do. Like the requirements for this are not bad. They're stuff you'll probably already have done just from trying to figure out how the game works. The worst requirement for this one is probably killing a cave bug in the Lumbridge Swamp. This requires level seven Slayer and you'll have to figure out what a light source is before you can do that. But again, it's an easy diary. There's not really any tasks in here that should be too taxing on you. For the 30 free low elks, I think I'm going to put this one in B as well. Uh, I think I'm going to put this one right here. This ring itself becomes very, very nice later on. Again, the easy diary kind of gets like a pass because it does it unlocks all this stuff, right? Like you can't get these items at all unless you do the easy diary. So they all kind of get a bump from that, but still pretty good. I know the image might look weird, but next is the Mauritania Easy Diary. This requires level 20 combat, 15 crafting, 15 slayer, 12 cooking, and 23 farming. It also requires the completion of Nature Spirit, and I'm going to assume you'll probably need to do Priest in Peril as well, because you probably need to get into Mauritania. The most annoying task for this one is probably placing a Scarecrow in the Mauritania Flower Patch. This one is not that bad. It only requires 23 farming, but compared to everything else, it, it's kind of big. If you're an Iron Man account, you'll actually need level 47 because you have to grow the watermelon yourself. So that one could be pretty taxing for Iron Man, but overall, not that bad. You should be able to get this one done again very quickly. The rewards for this one are the Mauritania Legs 1, and this gives you two daily teleports to the slime pit beneath the Ectophontis. Uh, this is kind of nice. It can kind of help you with some early prayer training. Getting those two teleports will let you get two full inventories of slime, which will save you the trip down there. It also gives you an antique lamp for 2,500 experience, a 50% chance of a ghast ignoring you rather than attacking when you're in the swamp, and you actually get 2.5% more Slayer experience in the Slayer Tower while on a Slayer task. This one, uh, kind of nice, kind of useless. Uh, I don't really think I need to talk about this one too much. This is one that you kind of build up towards, like you do this one and you do it because you want to do the later tiers. Uh, for now, the Mortania Diary goes into C. Next, we have the Varrock Easy Diary. This one requires level 9 runecrafting, 13 agility, 5 thieving, 8 crafting, 
15 mining and 20 fishing. It also requires the completion of rune mysteries and gaining 50 kudos in the museum. The reward for this one is the Varrock Armor 1. This gives you a 10% chance of mining two ores at once up to gold. And it also gives you a 10% chance of smelting two bars from two ores at the same time up to steel when using the Edgeville Furnace. And the good news about that one is that experience is granted for both bars. To be fair, experience is granted for both ores when you're mining as well. You also get an antique lamp for 2500 experience, and Zaf will now sell you 15 battle stabs every day for 7000 coins. The Skull Scepter will now hold up to 14 charges, and individual Skull Scepter parts will now give you one extra bone fragment when you're combining them together. This one's alright, you know, 10% chance of mining two ores and 10% chance at smelting two bars is pretty nice. Uh, in like a grand scheme, you do a lot of mining at Motherload. Uh, you also don't really mine anything below gold. I guess you mine like iron for a fair bit of time. Uh, but this one is useful, I guess, early on, but you kind of outgrow it pretty quickly. The battle staffs, I guess, are nice. You can make a little bit of money every day, but that just kind of snowballs the longer you go on. Like, I think the elite here gives you like 120, so it's like almost 10x. Uh, it's okay. It's nothing really that special. Uh, I'm going to put it in... It either goes at the bottom of B or the top of C. We'll put it in the top of C for now. The most annoying task for this one is probably gaining at least 50 kudos. You'll probably get these through questing, but you probably will be pretty much past the point where this is even beneficial when you have 50 kudos. Uh, yeah, this one is just kind of like one you get done when you have time or you notice you can do it. Then we have the Western Provinces Easy Diary. This one requires 30 range, level 40 combat, 20 fletching, 9 hunter, 15 mining, the completion of big chompy bird hunting and rune mysteries, as well as gathering 30 chompy bird kills. That will become a theme for this diary, and it might suck, but later on, you probably want to get it done. The rewards for this one are the Western Banner 1, which I don't think has a teleport in the easy tier. Again, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I'm like, 99% sure it doesn't have a teleport. It also gives you an antique lamp for 2500 experience. You get a 25% chance of spawning two chompy birds at once, and you get 25 free ogre arrows every day from rants. This one is very much like the desert one. It's not very useful right now. It does technically give you some free arrows, so I guess I'll put it above the desert for now, but not very much practical use. It is one you probably want to get done so you can start stacking your choppy kills, but uh, for the easy tier, nothing special. The most annoying task for this one is probably playing a game of pest control, just because you need to get to level 40 before you can play the game. Uh, nothing on here really looks that bad. You just kind of do pretty, pretty easy tasks with very, very few requirements anywhere. And the last one of the easy tier is the Wilderness Easy Diary. This one requires level 21 magic, 20 agility, and 15 mining. It also requires completion of Enter the Abyss, which you should do anyway because that is a great way to start Runecraft. The rewards for this one is the Wilderness Sword 1. This sword is very nice because it always slashes webs. It actually has a 100% chance to slash a web. And this works outside of the wilderness as well. So I think the only real practical use is the uh, Forthos dungeon, but still pretty nice to have. I used it here when I did my Seracnus grind. You also get an antique lamp for 2,500 experience. And the wilderness lever can now teleport you to either Edgeville or, or Ardoin. Uh, that's pretty, pretty big. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the Edgeville teleport is very nice, especially if you're trying to go between the two and you don't have either of the teleports unlocked. Uh, not really like life changing or account making, but it, it's a nice feature to have. And you also get 10 free runes from Lundale uh, once a day. This one has some minor utility. Um, yeah, it's just kind of whatever. It's something you probably get done. I'd kind of look at it like the Varrock diary where it's like the stuff you get from it, you outgrow pretty quickly. Uh, so if you're like way past this point, it's not something you really need to rush, but it is something you need to do for the later tiers. And the later tiers is where you get a majority of your rewards for achievement diaries. 
Uh, so the easy tier itself, just because it gives you the sword that is kind of useful pretty much forever, especially if you're doing like a clue in the wilderness, it's so nice to not worry about having to slash the web 500 times just to get through it. I think this one is very similar to the Varrock Diary. I think it has a little bit more utility and a little bit more longevity. So I'm gonna put it in C above the Varrock Diary for now. Uh, a lot of these would probably be in D because the rewards are not that good, but they do unlock the gear itself. So uh, yeah, they go in C for now. And that is the entirety of the easy tier. So I guess now it is time to talk about the medium tier and do it all again three more times. Okay, and kicking off the medium tier is the Ardoin Medium Diary. This one kind of falls off from the first one. The bang for your buck is nowhere near as good, and it has much higher requirements. For this one, you need 38 strength, 25 range, 51 magic, 10 construction, 39 agility, 38 thieving, 49 crafting, level 1 fletching, 20 quest points, 1 smithing, 50 fire making, 36 wood cutting, and 31 farming. You'll also need completion of Enlightened Journey, the Hand in the Sand, the Tower of Life, and Underground Pass. You'll also need to have at least started Fairy Tale Part 2, started Sea Slug, and reached the part in the Watchtower quest that grants you access to the Scavid Caves. The reward for this one is the Ardoin Cloak 2. This now will give you an additional 3 teleports. Uh, this gives you, sorry, three teleports every day to the Ardoin farm patch. You don't get three additional teleports. You get one new one, and it has three uses every day. It also gives you an antique lamp for 7,500 experience, 100 free noted pure essence, which is quite terrible. This is like a, a nothing reward. Uh, also now, Unicows, Newt Roost, and Spidey drops will be noted in the Tower of Life. This is kind of nice for Ultimate Iron Man, or just regular Iron Man in general. The biggest reward for this one is probably the 10% increased chance to pickpocket in Ardoin. This is great for doing knights. Uh, this works even if the cloak is like not equipped or in your inventory. It's just completing the diary gives you this reward. You also get the ability to toggle your Ring of Life to go to Ardoin, which is... Kind of a nothing reward and you will receive additional runes when runecrafting at the arania altar this is zmi as well as your coin pouch is going from 28 to 56 when pickpocketing which is pretty nice to be honest it lets you spam click a little bit more before you need to click on those the most annoying task for this one is probably just upgrading your ivan staff uh, this requires completion of underground pass which can be pretty annoying especially if you're at a low agility level and you're on a new-ish account uh, as well as it costing 200k for someone who's doing this diary 200k is a lot of money but all of the tasks on here are very doable i think it's okay as a diary the teleports to the farm are nice it's unfortunate they're not unlimited like the monastery teleport is I think the most important one is the 10% increase to your pickpocketing, but it scales so much as you level that I, it, it matters, but it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, I think it kind of goes in B, kind of similar. Yeah, it goes in B for now. I don't think I'm going to list the requirements for each of these. I'll, like the level requirements, I'll tell you the quest, but the, the level requirements are just kind of there and you'll look them up when you're doing it anyway. Uh, maybe I'll just give you like the total level it says because then you kind of have a ballpark of like what your skill should be around. So the total level requirement for this one is 485. It has like a variety of skills, nothing a... You know what? I'll tell you the highest requirement for each one. The highest requirement for this one is level 50 crafting with a unique color to 43 prayer. That could be an expensive one, especially early on. For quests, you need to complete Eagle's Peak, Anakra's Lament, the Golem, and the Spirits of Elite. The rewards for this one are the Desert Amulet 2, and this now gives you a free teleport to Narda once per day. You also get an Antique Lamp for 7500 experience and any skill above 40, and the Pharaoh Scepter can hold up to 25 charges. This one kinda sucks. Not very good. The Teleport to Narda I guess is nice, but there's like a, a scroll you could use. Or you could just use the carpet from any town. Um, because it doesn't unlock the amulet, that's our first one in D. That one kind of sucks. The most tedious task for this one is either catching an orange salamander, just because it requires level 47 hunter, 
or maybe climbing the agility pyramid because if you're 30 agility there is a chance you fall a few times uh this diary pretty simple to do but the rewards not very good next is the falador medium diary the total level required for this one is 448 the highest requirement is level 49 fire making but it's pretty easy nothing really stands out here maybe 42 agility is something that you kind of struggle with but everything else pretty standard you'll probably get a longer way anyway for quests the only additional ones are recruitment drive and the mini quest skippy and the mogers it also requires partial completion of rat catchers the reward for this one is the Falador Shield 2. This now gives you a 50% prayer restore once a day, an antique lamp for 7,500 experience, 10% more experience from the Falador farming patch, which is kind of nice if you're doing your tree run. You also get access to the shortcut in Motherload Mine, which is very nice before you get to top floor. And you now have a higher chance of receiving a clue scroll from the Falador guards. Oh, uh, this is kind of another whatever diary. I mean, it's kind of nice to get the additional clue scroll luck. The Motherload Mine shortcut is very nice, but this is one, that, again, that you just outgrow so quickly. If you're a main account, getting medium clues from Falador Guards is not worth your time. It's so much faster to do it any other way. Uh, I think it's still better than the Desert Diary, but nothing really huge from this one. It goes in B. The most annoying one here, if you're an Iron Man, might be unlocking the crystal chest just because you have to get a crystal key, but everything else here is pretty easy. Maybe squeezing through the crevice in the Dwarven Mines because you need 42 agility, or lighting a Bullseye Lantern because you need 49 fire making. Everything else is very straightforward. This diary should be doable by pretty much everyone. Next is the Fremenic Medium Diary. This requires 331 total levels, and the highest requirement is level 50 smithing with a shout out to 47 slayer and 40 mining the quests required for this one are eagle's peak and horror from the deep it also pretty much requires between a rock you need like pretty much full completion you need partial completion of olaf's quest and you need to have at least started fairy tale part 2. the reward is the fremenic sea boots 2 which are still bad you get an antique lamp worth 7500 experience the shortcut jump between the miscellaneous dock and etc but this is so irrelevant you probably never use it and you also get an improved 10 percent chance to get approval rating when gaining favor on miscellaneous uh this one sucks this might be one of the worst ones the most annoying task here might be slaying a brine rat just because you need 47 slayer and pretty much completion of olaf's quest uh, other than that, you should be able to do these as long as you've just been progressing your account normally. Uh, but the rewards from this one are pretty terrible. They're worse than the Desert Media. Uh, this is at the bottom of my list for now. Next is Kandarin Medium. This one requires 445 total levels with the highest requirement being 50 fletching with a shout out to 46 fishing and 45 magic. Quest-wise, you need to do Alfred Grimhand's Bar Crawl, Elemental Workshop 2, and Waterfall Quest. Again, you'll need partial completion of Fairy Tale Part 2. The rewards for this one are the Kandarin Headgear 2. You'll get 33% faster spinning at the Sears Village Spinning Wheel, an Antique Lamp for 7,500 experience, 10% extra experience when cutting maple trees in Sears Village, which is hella nostalgic, and I appreciate anyone who does that. Uh, the coal trucks can now hold up to 280 coal. I don't know anyone who uses the coal trucks. I don't even remember using the coal trucks when I was nine. The Flax Keeper will exchange 60 noted flax for 60 bowstring every day. Eh, that's whatever. 10% more Marks of Grace from Sears Village, which is a nice little upgrade, and the 5% chance to save a harvest life uh, from the Catherby herb patch. So it like some small ones that it's hard to like explain to people like long term, but uh, I think since you play the game, you'll kind of understand this. When we look at benefits, we don't look at how beneficial they are one time. We look at how beneficial they are lifetime. So getting Marks of Grace, 10% is nice, but it's nothing crazy because you kind of stop gathering Marks of Grace here at some point. So that benefit is nice for a short period of time, but once you outgrow it, it's completely useless. The 5% chance to save a Harvest Life is nice because you'll pretty much always gather herbs from here if you're someone who does herb runs. And 5% over a lifetime is 
an incalculable number in my head. There's no way to tell you how many times you'll gather from there, but if you take 5% and multiply it by the infinite amount of times you gather from there, it is definitely worthwhile. But even with that said, nothing here is that crazy. It definitely has more use than the other medium ones we just looked at, and some of the like lower tier ones that have no rewards. So I think it just sits at the top of C for now. I think that's fair. The most annoying task for this is probably creating a super anti-poison from scratch in Sears their Catherby, just because it requires level 48 herb lore. Maybe something like cooking a bass in Catherby, because you have to catch a cook it, so you need 46 fishing and 43 cooking. Uh, but other than that, you should pretty much, again, be able to do all of these um, just as you progress your account. After that one, we have the Karamja Medium Diary. This one has a pretty low requirement of only 260 total levels. The highest requirement, again, is 65 fishing. It's like, for whatever reason, the Karamja Diary just has like one skill that you really need to level up. Uh, so 65 fishing is by far the standout. Nothing is really close. To even do the Easy Diary, you need the another requirement which is 40 mining so yeah it's like 65 fishing 50 wood cutting 41 hunter you need some big levels but you don't need any levels and a lot of skills the quest requirements are the grand tree in shiloh village and the additional requirements are 100 percent in taibo wanai cleanup that is rough i don't really want to do that again sorry if you haven't done it yet you also need partial completion of Dragon Slayer 1 and partial completion of Taibo Wanai Trio. The rewards for this one are the Karamja Gloves 2, which give you increased agility experience from redeeming uh, agility tickets. Uh, again, you'll be 99 agility before you even do this, so not that big. And while worn, you get 10% additional uh, agility experience from the obstacles in the agility arena. You'll also get an antique lamp, and this time it's only 5,000 experience. Again, the Karamja Diary is weird because it was like the only diary added when Old School came out. Uh, so yeah, it sucks. A little bit less XP, but don't really matter that much. Uh, and you'll also get access to the Stepping Stone shortcut across the river in Shiloh Village. Uh, this, not really that important. It might take you like five or six seconds, but most of the time you'll never even use it. So no big deal here. Uh, this one, again, is a step down from the Easy Diary. Like, the Easy Diary gives you access to, like, the benefit of selling items to and from the shop. Uh, so, this one really doesn't give you anything. It gives you something when you're 99 agility, but, like, it's a medium diary. Who cares? Uh, I'm going to put this one just above the Desert Diary. It doesn't give you a teleport, but uh, I'm going to change my mind. It, it goes here. It's better than the boots, but it doesn't really offer you too much at all. For the most annoying task, there's probably two ways to look at this. The most anno annoying task to some people will probably be catching a Karambwan because you need 65 fishing. Uh, but I'm going to assume for most people, it's getting 100% uh, cleanup favor. That shit sucks. It is so slow. <laughs> it is so slow. I, I don't envy you if you still have to do that. I'm sorry. After that, we've got Karend in Kevos Medium. This has a total level requirement of 377. The highest requirement is level 53 Hunter with a shout out to 49 Agility as well as 50 Fire Making and 50 Wood Cutting. Quest wise, you pretty much need to complete all of the Zaya quests. So you need to complete the Ascent of Arceus, the Depths of Despair, the Forsaken Tower, the Queen of Thieves, Tale of Righteousness, as well as Eagle's Peak. You'll need 40% Shazian Favor, 60% Arceus Favor, and 60% Hasidius Favor, as well as having at least started Fairy Tale Part 2 for the Fairy Ring. The rewards for this one are Rada's Blessing 2, which gives you 5 teleports to Karen Woodland every day, which again is kind of a nothing teleport, you won't really use this one. And now you'll get an additional 2% chance when fishing to catch 2 fish at once, as well as now getting a plus 1 prayer bonus given by the Blessing. You will also get an antique lamp for 7,500 experience. And now you'll get free access to Crab Claw Island. If you are a sand crab killer, this is a must have diary in most cases. You'll now also get a 5% chance to mine two dense essence blocks at once, which you won't even have unlocked at this point. Uh, but this is just Zaya rune crafting, so kind of nice to have if you're working on that. You'll also get 20 free dynamite a day from Thyrus. Uh, dynamite is like a very similar thing to battle stabs. Like some people collect it for money or if you want to do some blast mine, but 
The 20 is not that crazy, probably not even worthwhile going over there. And the last reward is a reduced tanning price from Odin uh, in Forthos Dungeon from 80%, which was the easy diary, to 60%. May have some all right rewards for this one. Uh, again, this diary was added into the game last it is the newest diary. So the rewards are much better than a lot of the other diaries just because I think they needed to like pack stuff in there for it to even get approved by the players. The most annoying task might be entering the farming guild because you need 45 farming as well as 60% Hasidious favor. Uh, but this will really depend on who you ask. Uh, switching to the Arceus spellbook is another task, and this requires 60% Arceus favor, which can be annoying for some people if you don't like the library. But yeah, those are really the only two standout ones. There's a lot of questing in this one on this continent, but again, this is something you'll get done as you progress your account normally. Uh, I think this one is slightly worse. I, it's pretty similar to the other blessing. Uh, I think it goes, it has to go below it because you don't, get the new unlock of the teleport uh but yeah it's just kind of there you'll do it along your way after that one we've got the lumbridge medium this one has a lot of skill requirements but they are all pretty low level you only need 340 total level to do this but the standout one is level 70 combat and the highest individual skill requirement is 50 range uh, not really anything else to shout out aside from 42 Hunter, but mm, these are all pretty low requirements. There's just a lot of them. Quest-wise, you only need to complete Animal Magnetism and again, have started Fairy Tale Part 2 for the Fairy Ring. The rewards for this one are the Explorer's Ring 2. This will now give you 50% run energy three times a day, which is much nicer than the original one. And you'll also get three daily teleports to the Cabbage Patch near the Falador Farm. That is pretty big and makes it much better than the original one, but you'll also get an Antique Lamp worth 7,500 experience and you'll now have access to the Drainer Village Wall Shortcut. I think this was tested in a soup video pretty recently that it does save time, but it's like very minuscule, so it doesn't even really matter that much. Uh, I think this ring is good for the Cabbage Patch teleport, and this is where you get it from, right? You don't get the Cabbage Patch teleport from the easy tier. So getting the Cabbage Patch teleport, in my opinion, puts it above uh, the previous one. I was gonna put the Elite ring in for some reason, but uh, yeah, for now, it kind of sits up here. It's one of the better medium diaries. After that, we've got the Mauritania medium diary. This one has a requirement of 335 total levels. The highest requirement is both 50 fishing and 50 smithing, with a shout out to 42 agility and 42 slayer, as well as, I guess, 45 uh, woodcutting. Quest-wise, you'll need to do Cabin Fever, the Dwarf Cannon, Ghost Ahoy, and the mini quest, the Lair of Tarn Razalor. I'll never say that name right. You'll also need to have started uh, in aid of the Meyer Key. Is it Meyer Key or Meyer Q? I don't know. The reward for this one is the Mauritania Legs 2. These now have five daily teleports to the Slime Pit, so not a new teleport, but uh, just some additional ones every day. And these also act as a Ghost Speak amulet when worn, which is kind of nice. I use the Elite ones when I do my daily bones, but it's not really something you need to like grind out. It's just something you should do as you go along completing diaries. The antique lamp for 7,500 experience and any skill, as well as Robin now offering you 13 buckets of slime and 13 bot bots, pots of bone meal uh, in exchange for bones every day. Uh, I use this every day. The elite tier offers you many more, but this is great for charging the bone crusher, which is a reward from the next tier of this diary. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty nice to have and it will save you uh, just some time. Nothing really that crazy. You'll now also get 5% more Slayer experience in the Slayer Tower when on a Slayer task. Yeah, I think these are kind of meh. Nothing, nothing really that crazy here. Uh, I think they're better than the Desert Amulet from the Easy Tier, but um, and probably that as well. I'd put them there. That That feels fair to me. The most annoying task is probably killing a fever spider on Bring Death Island. This requires uh, 42 Slayer and having at least started Rum Deal. Uh, a lot of these tasks are pretty easy and they're all pretty similar. It's like another one is like kill a terror dog, which is 40 Slayer and the completion of Haunted Mine. Um, maybe we could put that one above just because Haunted Mine is a little bit more annoying to do, but... Yeah, nothing really super crazy here. A lot of stuff you could just get done at any point in time. 
After that, we've got the Varrock Medium Diary. For this one, you'll need 212 total levels, with the highest requirement being level 40 fire making. Uh, the only other one that really stands out here is 30 farming or 30 agility. Everything else is pretty low. Maybe 40 combat is also one that I should point out, but yeah, some pretty low requirements for this one. Quest-wise, you'll need to have completed the Dig Site, Enlightened Journey, Garden of Tranquility, Gertrude's Cat, A Soul's Bane, Tree Gnome Village, and have set up the RuneScape Authenticator. Is that real? Do you actually need an Authenticator for a diary? I did this diary so long ago, I can't even remember that. I'll see it in the, the task list when I look at it, though. The rewards for this one are the Varrock Armor 2. You get the same 10% chance of mining or smelting uh, two ores or bars. For this one, it's up to Mithril for mining, as well as up to Mithril for smithing when using the uh, Edgeville Furnace. You'll also get an Antique Lamp for 7,500 experience. Saf will sell you 30 Battle Stabs every day. You also now get the ability to toggle your Varrock Teleport to go to the Grand Exchange instead of the Varrock Square, which is pretty nice, and I think most people just use it as like a quality of life thing. Uh, and the Skull Scepter will now hold up to 18 charges. The Skull Scepter is a unique item. It's kind of like, I'm thinking in my head like how I use it. I kind of only use it for doing clue scrolls for like getting to Barbarian Village, uh, but I think it's more commonly used for like free-to-play accounts and stuff like that, but you can't do a diary on a free-to-play account, so eh, it's kind of whatever. Uh, again, I, I, <laughs> I think this diary is pretty bad. Um, it's got less uses than most things. The double mining is pretty nice, uh, but again, like at this point in time, you'll probably be in the motherload mine, so this doesn't... Does it work there? I think it does, actually. Uh, I'm looking at the exceptions right now. So the, the plate body doesn't work for Ancient Essence, Ash Piles, which is volcanic ash, I'm assuming, uh, Baronite Rocks, the Blast Mine, Day Alt, Essence, uh, Dense Runestone, which is Zaya Runecrafting, uh, any of the Salts after the Troll Quest, Gem Rocks, Luna Rocks. Oh, it doesn't work in the uh, the Motherload Mine. So uh, yeah, it, it goes in. <laughs> it goes in D for me, my friend. Uh, do I put it above or below the Falador Shield? I think you'd probably get more use out of it just because of the teleport uh, toggle, but eh, it's pretty bad, man. It's it's just one you do along your way. After Varrock, we have the Western Provinces Medium Diary. For this one, you'll need 315 total levels, with the standouts being 70 combat, which is pretty big. And then other than that, just like 46 fishing, 40 mining, some pretty other like low requirements. Quest-wise, you'll need to do Big Chompy Bird Hunting, Eagle's Peak, and the Eyes of Gluffrey. You'll also need to now do 125 Chompy Kills, have partial completion of Monkey Madness 1, and partial completion of One Small Favor. The reward is the Western Banner 2, which I believe still doesn't have any teleports, but I believe just by owning it, you get 50% chance for uh, two Chompy Birds appearing, which is nice for stacking towards later tiers. Uh, the Crystal Saw can now hold double the amount of charges from 56, or from 28 to 56, and you'll now get 50 free uh, Ogre Arrows from Rance, which is up from the 25 from the easy tier. And of course, you'll get your 7,500 experience XP lamp. Uh, this one sucks. This one is like just as bad, if not worse, than the Fremen Uh Probably a little bit better because at least you get arrows and the Crystal Saw has some uses, but you'll never go through 28 charges in one sitting, so it's like kind of whatever. Uh, the Western Provinces does get good eventually, but uh, for now it's just poop. And the last one of the medium tier is the Wilderness Medium Diary. This one has a skill requirement of 353 total levels with the standouts being 60 magic, 50 slayer, 52 agility, 55 mining, 50 smithing, and 61 woodcutting. That is all of these skill requirements. They are all standing out. Quest-wise, you have no quest requirements, but for the additional ones, you'll need access to the Wilderness God Wars dungeon, as well as partial completion of Between a Rock. The rewards for this one are the Wilderness Sword 2, an antique lamp for 7,500 experience and any skill above 40. You have an increased chance of a successful yield from Ents to fifth or by 15%. Uh, I think most people don't do Ents. I think it's pretty much all bots at this point. Uh, you get a 20% discount off entry to the resource area. So it is now 6,000 GP. 
You can now have four ecumenical keys at one time. These are used for God Wars Dungeon. You'll also get 20 free random runes from Lundale once per day. And you'll now get access to the shortcut in the Deep Wilderness Dungeon, which I believe takes you to Fire Giants from the staircase. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Like, there's not, there's not much going on here. Uh, I don't think anything really stands out here. Uh, it's definitely got to go below the Easy Diary because the sword doesn't get upgraded. You don't get a new teleport. Uh, Ants, who cares? Uh, agility or um, the resource area, you won't really use right now. Uh, four Acumenical Keys is nice, but like it's plus one. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, the runes kind of shitty. You probably get air runes. <laughs> and the shortcut, it, it's useful when you have to use it, but most of the time you won't be using it. Um, I think this is another one that goes down near the bottom. Uh, put it over here. And that is the medium tier. The requirements for the hard diary are now on screen. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so now we get a huge jump in requirements. For the Arduin hard diary, the total level required is 971, which is quite a big jump. The highest requirement is level 70 farming, but honorable mention to 65 rune crafting and 68 smithing. And I'm totally incorrect. The highest requirement is actually 72 thieving. You'll also need 107 quest points, as well as completion of the Legends quest, Monkey Madness 1, Morning's End Part 2, and the Watchtower quest. The reward for this diary is the Ardoin Cloak 3. This gives you five daily teleports to the farming patch. Uh, so a little bit better than the medium tier, but nothing super crazy. In the hard tier, we are now getting uh, antique lamps with 15,000 experience in any skill above level 50. You'll now also get 150 free uh, noted pure essence, but like 150 pure essence is so bad. That's like one rune crafting trip. You'll also get the ability to toggle the watchtower teleport to go to the center of Yanil instead of, well, in the watchtower. You'll get 10% increased chance of succeeding when pickpocketing around the entire game. And this uh, goes into effect even if you don't have the cloak uh, equipped or in your inventory. And now you'll be able to hold up to 84 coin pouches, which makes uh, spam pickpocketing a little bit more chill. No new teleport. We get a little bit, we get that 10% increased chance kind of anywhere. So this is good for like uh, nothing. It's good for Knights of Ardoin. What else do you spam pickpocket? Tazar, I guess, but that's at like 99. You kind of just do Pyramid Plunder, which is not pickpocketing. Blackjacking, which is not pickpocketing technically because they're knocked out. This one, not a, like as big of a jump as the medium one is. It's still good. Like arguably it, it's still like pretty good, but uh, I don't think it's as crucial as getting the uh, medium one done. I still think it goes in B. I'll probably slot it in here for now. The most annoying task might be attempting to steal from the chest in Ardoin Castle. That's just because it has a 72 thieving requirement. Uh, if you're an Iron Man, it's probably the Dragon Square Shield just because of a little bit of RNG. Maybe it's picking poison ivy berries because of the 70 farming requirement. Or maybe it's crafting death runes because you don't want to do morning's end part two uh, i definitely think this is one that you should do though when you can the desert hard diary has a total level requirement of 737 the highest individual requirement is 70 agility but shout out to needing 85 combat as well as 68 magic and 65 slayer quest wise you'll need to do contact desert treasure one dream mentor and the feud you'll also need to get a calphite queen kill so you probably want some other combat levels just so you can actually do that but the reward for this is the desert amulet 3 you'll get an antique lamp for 15,000 experience the pharaoh scepter can now hold up to 50 charges you get access to the big window in the alcarid palace this is just like a fast travel to the shanty uh pass if you're teleporting to the alcarid palace with a glory uh sometimes you use this but like i don't think it's that crucial uh, you can now teleport inside or outside of an Ocarus temple with the Camulet. Uh, a big one is that all your carpet rides are free, so getting around the desert is just much easier. And then another big one, especially for Iron Man, is that Zahir will now create unfinished potions. 
Uh, you just need to bring a vial of water and the clean herb. And Zahir will also clean uh, grimy herbs, which is very nice. So you can kind of skip a lot of time consuming stuff. These are like more for Iron Man, like a main account could do this, but most of the time it's just better to just buy the unfinished potion if you want to train herb lore, just cause like time investment versus whatever. It, it, it makes sense when you think about it. And another big one is that ropes placed at both the Calphite layer and the Calphite Queen uh, tunnel entrance are now permanent. So you don't need to bring a rope every time. Uh, this is very nice for when you want to do your Slayer task. You just get to Calphite Queen. You don't need to bring a rope. Uh, this one's pretty good. I don't think any of these rewards are like game changing, especially for a main account, but like free carpet rides, uh, the, ro the permanent ropes are very nice. And I kind of take that for granted. I am now thinking about how often I would have used that doing Calphite Queen. But what's so weird is that like the, the amulet doesn't get like an upgrade. It just stays the same until elite. It's like really good when it's an elite, but uh, overall, the diary itself is is pretty good. I think it has about as much value as the hard Ardoin diary does with that pickpocketing uh, benefit. Maybe a little bit more because it has a few more things. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in B for now. It's it's pretty good. Next is the Falador hard diary, which has a total level requirement of 769. The highest skill requirement is level 72 Slayer. But shout out to 70 prayer and 71 woodcutting for this one. You'll need completion of Heroes Quest, the Slug Menace, uh, and Grim Tales. For this one, you'll need to uh, defeat the Giant Mole, which is fairly easy as long as you have Protect from Melee. And you'll need to get a full Prospector set from Motherload Mine. The rewards are the Falador Shield 3, which will finally give you a 100% prayer restore once a day. And you now get access to the Mole Locator as long as you have the shield uh, with you when you go into the Giant Mole Lair. You'll also get an Antique Lamp worth 15,000 experience. You get access to the Bank Chest at the Crafting Guild, which is very big, but it's not big until you get 99 Crafting which should come substantially later than when you do this uh, diary. Another big one is that the giant mole will now drop moated, uh, <laughs> moated, noted mole skins and mole claws, which makes your trips much, much longer. And you get a shortcut to the Fountain of Heroes, which is be below the Heroes Guild. Uh, there's a clue step here, so that saves you a bit of time, but I think most people aren't charging glories this way, so eh, that one not so big. Uh, I think the big one for this is the mole locator. Having the mole locator makes this so much better. In the elite tier, you actually get the locator without having to bring the shield, but just getting the ability to do that so you know where it is, at the same time, getting the noted drops makes mole so much better. Like it's just infinitely better than when you don't have it. Uh, mole is like a weird boss. It's actually pretty good money right now, which is funny. I saw some stuff the other day that like, Mole is actually more profitable than doing Zolra at the current time. The mole skins and claws just have a monetary value and it's nice to get like a consistent amount of them. Uh, the pet is pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty easy boss to kill. You'll take no damage if you use Protect from Melee. So you can kill it in uh, Darox and it's just, it's free. It's like a very, very cheap boss to do. Uh, I think this one's pretty good. I think this one I'm going to put in B as well. I don't think anything in it is like A, like game changing, uh, but I'm gonna put it at the top of B for now, I think. The most annoying task might be to kill a Skeletal Wyvern. This is because you need 72 Slayer. Uh, it's just like a, a grind thing. Uh, the only other one that might be kind of annoying is getting the full Prospector kit. It's just like a time sink, right? Like you'll, you need 60 mining but then you'll also kind of get 60 mining while going for the prospector kit. So it kind of like cancels itself out. But yeah, those are probably the only two. Most of these are fairly fairly easy, fairly straightforward. Um, oh, maybe it's uh, changing your family crest to the Ceridoman symbol because that requires 70 prayer, which can be quite expensive or just time consuming if you're an Iron Man. Uh, so yeah, those are my picks for annoying tasks. After that, we've got the Fremenic Hard Diary. This one has a total level requirement of 691. The highest skill requirement is 75 Thieving, but shout out to 72 Magic, as well as 70 Mining. That's pretty rough. And 66 Herb Lore. Uh, some time and money investment in this one. Quest-wise, you'll need to complete Edgar's Ruse, the Fremenic Isles, Lunar Diplomacy, Throne of Miscellanea, and have at least started the Giant Dwarf. The rewards for this diary are the Fremenic Sea Boots 3, 
an antique lamp for 15,000 experience. You can now teleport to Waterworth Island with the Enchanted Lyre, which is pretty nice till you have a teleport in your POH. You also get uh, noted adamant bars from Aviancy's and God Wars Dungeon. This used to be a money maker like way back when, but now it's kind of just like a, a nice little thing that's there. You'll also get a shortcut to the roof of Troll Stronghold. This is good for your herb run. The Stony Basalt teleport is also changed to up there. Like you don't have to climb up. It will automatically place you up there when you teleport. But that only happens if you have 73 agility. And you get access to two new lunar spells being Tan Leather with 78 uh, magic and Recharge Dragonstone at 89. Uh, this one is pretty good. I don't think the boots get an upgrade, do they? No, the boots are still the same. The boots are bad until they're elite. Like they're kind of useless. You can use them once. So not even good for, for Vorkath. But this one's all right. I don't think it's as crazy as uh, the Falador one, but it's still pretty good. Tan Leather is a good uh, money-making spell. The Shortcut is very nice for her run, make you a little bit more money every day. Uh, the Teleport to Waterworth Island is nice for doing DKs. Uh, but again, you should just use the one in your POH when you get it. Yeah, this one's kind of okay. I think this one sits like more impactful than getting some extra toggle uh probably like here yeah that that feels about right to me the most annoying task might be either stealing from a gem stall in keldegrim because of 75 thieving requirement or mining five adamant ores in yatiso because of the 70 mining requirement uh, most of the other tasks on the the hard tier here seem pretty easy and just kind of come with account progression so this one you could do pretty easily. Next, we have the Kandarin Hard Diary. This one has a total of requirement of 769, with the highest requirement being 75 smithing. For this one, you also need to look out for needing 70 prayer, 70 defense, and 70 fletching. Quest-wise, you'll need to do King's Ransom in Taibawane Trio. You'll need to have completed Barbarian Training in Fishing, Smithing, and Fire Making. You'll need completion of the Camelot Training Room, which is the room you get piety in, the Knight's Wave Challenge, and you need to have at least started Desert Treasure 1, but if you've done the Desert 1, you've done this quest. The rewards for this one are the Kandarin Headgear 3, which finally gives you a teleport. You can now teleport to Sherlock once per day. This is great for doing a Sherlock step in any clue that you're doing. You'll get an Antique Lamp worth 15,000 experience. Thormac will now enchant Battle Staffs for 30,000 coins instead of 40,000, so not a huge upgrade. For some reason, the Coal Trucks can now hold up to 308 coal. You'll never use that, but you could put 308 coal in there. The Flax Keeper will exchange 120 noted Flax for 120 Bowstrings, which I guess is technically a moneymaker. I don't think Bowstrings are worth that much anymore, but you could make some money if you're in a pinch. You'll get 15% more Marks of Grace uh, from Sears Village Rooftop, which is very nice. You'll now get 10% increased chance to save a Harvest Life from Catherby Herb Patch, which is good for money. You'll get 10% more reward points from Barbarian Assault, which will make the grind to level 5 in all rolls a little bit faster. And probably the most important reward from any diary is the 10% increased activation chance for the special effect from Enchanted Bolts. This does not work in PvP, but it does stack in PVM with special attacks from the Armadillo crossbow and in theory the ZCB as well, even though it's 100%. And that one is very, very big, but you'll also get the ability to toggle the Camelot teleport to just outside Sears Village Bank. Uh, this one is also very good for doing agility because I think using the teleport here and teleporting here after you finish a lap of the rooftop makes it better experience uh, instead of doing Palvenich. So you technically do Sears from 60 all the way to 80. And on top of that, you'd get the bonus Marks of Grace. You, you see what I'm saying? It's it's a very good diary. Um, you could argue about this diary being like one or two, uh, just impact wise. I'm personally gonna put it as the most important diary in the game. It just has so many, so many good benefits. Uh, I think the biggest one is the, the bolts. You won't really appreciate it till you're, till you're very deep into your account. Like it goes back to that thing I was saying about like looking at the benefit of something over lifetime as opposed to one instance of it. So every time you use a crossbow with enchanted bolts, you have a 10% chance 
a t an increased 10% chance to proc a bolt. If you're using a ruby bolt, this is now a 10% chance to hit that 100 on a boss monster. It's, it's huge over the course of your account. This is used in so many different PVM activities. I, I can't really spell out how important this one is. It's, it's very good. You kind of just have to trust me on this one. Uh, if, if you do one hard diary, it should be this one. The most annoying task for this one might be smithing an Adam and Spear at Otto's Grotto, just because you need 75 smithing. Or some people might see it as um, entering Sears Village Courthouse with piety turned on. For piety, you need 70 prayer. 70 prayer is quite expensive. Uh, you'll also need 70 defense. And odds are at this point when you're thinking about doing this, you'll probably have 70 attack and 70 strength with a lower defense level. Uh, so yeah, those are just like two you should look out for, but the rest of them are, are very doable. The Karam Jahar Diary has a total of a requirement of 539. Remember, this one is weird. This is the first diary added to the game. It is very strange. The highest level requirement for this one is actually 59 magic with an honest shout out to 53 agility and 52 mining. Uh, but you'll also need at least 100 combat, I believe. And you will need 100 combat. Yes, sorry, that is confirmed. I thought maybe this was like a recommendation for having to do Jad, but uh, you'll have to get a task from uh, Duradel, which does require 100 combat. Uh, Quest-wise, you'll need Tabawani Trio and partial completion of the Legends quest. The rewards for this one, again, are very, very good. This will be a bank teleport for a very long time for a lot of people, especially... Sorry, it's not a bank teleport. It's a deposit box for skilling teleport. The Karamjiglos 3 will now give you unlimited uh, free teleports to the underground portion of the Shiloh Village gem mine. Uh, and down here, there is a deposit box very close to the teleport. You'll also get an antique lamp. Again, this one is weird. You only get 10,000 XP and any skill above 40, as well as just getting general access to that underground portion of the Shiloh Village gem mine. The most annoying task for this one is by far getting a task from Duradel because you will need 100 combat. Uh, but other than that, maybe if you've never done the fight caves, you have to get halfway through so you can kill one of the mages. But this is a pretty good diary. The gem mine is a pretty good money maker. It's a good mining trading method. The deposit box is good for skilling until you have the crafting cape. Um, it's like kind of game changing. But it's not, like, game-shattering to the same degree. Uh, I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's it's good. It's like, I, I'd i probably put it in here. Like, the infinite light source early game whatever is excellent. Uh, but it's hard to, like, weigh stuff out, right? Because this is super important early game. But this gets way more important late game. And I think the late game takes longer. So we'll put this one above that one for now. Karend in Kebo's Hard Diary. This one only has a total level requirement of 462, with the highest requirement being level 74 farming, with an honorable mention to 70 smithing and 85 combat. I'm going to assume the 85 combat is for a Konar task. The quest requirements are the Architectural Alliance and Dream Enter. Just by seeing Architectural Alliance, that means you'll need 100% favor in every single Zaya household. Uh, but that is something you should do anyway because those unlock a ton of stuff for you. The reward is Rada's Blessing 3. This now has unlimited teleports to Karen Woodland, which is again not a very useful teleport. But it now has three teleports to Mount Karoom every day. This is very nice if you're doing uh, Konar Slayer, you're trying to do Hydra, you're killing worms for whatever reason. Uh, that is pretty much just a Slayer area. It's also like a bootleg way to get to the farming guild but you should just use the fairy ring so i take that all back but the slayer part is true you'll now also have a six percent chance to catch two fish at once when this is equipped this is up from four percent from the previous tier you get access to the ash sanctifier which is very nice when you're doing slayer it gets you some free passive uh prayer xp you get an antique lamp for fifteen thousand experience the Slayer Helmet will now work as a Shazian Helm 5 when you're doing Lizardmen on task. You have a 5% increased chance to save a Harvest Life at the Hasidious and Farming Guild patches. So that's 2 instead of 1. You get 40 free Dynamite a day from Thyrus. That's 
okay money, you should probably look into that. And the price of tanning is reduced at Eodin, Eodin, Odin, uh, in Forthos Dungeon from 60% of his default price to now 40%. Um, this is kind of a scam. It's not really worth going here to tan. Uh, it's good for ultimate Ironmen if you're doing uh, red dragons for prayer, tanning, uh, and crafting, but it, that one's kind of whatever. Uh, I think this one is pretty big. This diary is always good. Like all of the tiers are at least in B. Uh, this one, I think I'm going to put into A because this blessing is pretty good. I don't see this here in my notes, but I believe this also has a plus two prayer bonus if I'm not mistaken i am mistaken it only has a plus one prayer bonus uh so it's not better than a regular blessing for now uh but it is still pretty good the ash sanctifier is is pretty awesome it, i like using the ash sanctifier uh the slayer helmet bonus for lizardman shamans is pretty big the five percent chance for the uh harvest life is also big a free money maker I think this one goes in A. I think this one I'm going to put here because it doesn't give you that incredible deposit box like this one. A deposit box is such a weird thing to like look at as like an awesome reward, but it, it just makes like banking and like skilling banking so much better. Uh, but sorry, back to Kebos. This one is very good. It, it's still very good. It goes in A. It is worthwhile to do this one if you can do it. And now we venture off of Zaya back to the mainland and look at the Lumbridge and Drainer hard tier. This one has an 813 total level requirement with the highest requirement being both 70 cooking and 70 crafting with a shout out to 63 farming and 65 fire making. Quest wise, you'll need to do another slice of ham, tiers of gothics and the entirety of recipe for disaster. Uh, the additional requirement is that you'll need to unlock Bones to Peaches uh, from Mage Training Arena, which will probably also be our most annoying task when I look at the task list. The rewards for this one are the Explorer's Ring 3. This will give you 50% run energy four times a day, so basically 200%. You'll also get unlimited teleports to the Cabbage Patch near the Falador Farm. This is very good for your herb run, as well as quickly getting to Port Sarim if you don't have a spirit tree planted there. You'll get an antique lamp for 15,000 experience in any skill above level 50. You'll get access to a shortcut from the Lumbridge Swamp to the desert. This one is not very useful. There's a fairy ring that is much closer to where you want to go. And you'll get 10% increased experience from Tears of Gothics, which is pretty nice to claim every week as you're leveling up. Uh, this one is good, but I don't think it's as good as some of the ones we've already talked about. I think it kind of sits very similar to the uh the medium tier where it's like it's just a nice nice little upgrade it's not really super standout uh, all the benefits from it are good but they are not game changing so i will just put it directly above its counterpart the most annoying task depending on who you ask is definitely casting uh bones to peaches in alcarid palace this is because you have to unlock it through Mage Training Arena, and Mage Training Arena can take a very long time. But it could also be um, purchasing Barrow's Gloves just because of how long it takes to complete a recipe for disaster and all the variety of requirements that that quest has. Uh, so yeah, those are just kind of the two standouts there. A lot of these are pretty straightforward, and you should be able to get them all done. Next is the Mauritania Heart Diary. This has a total level requirement of 707 with the highest requirement being 71 agility, but shout out to 70 defense, 70 prayer, and 66 magic as kind of the bigger requirements. A lot of the other requirements just sit in the 50s. Quest wise, you'll need to complete Desert Treasure 1, Haunted Mine, in aid of the Meyer Key, Meyer Q, yeah, whatever you want, King's Ransom, and you'll need to have at least started the Great Brain Robbery. This one has another big reward that I really like, but the rewards are the Mauritania Legs 3, and this comes with unlimited teleports to Berg de Rot. This is very nice for a lot of reasons. It's right next to uh, Morton. It's really close to the boat to uh, Vershizen, or Darkmire technically. Uh, it's close to temple trekking if you need to do that for any sp like specific reason. Uh, and it is close to the haunted mine if you need to gather salve amulets. Uh, but the, I think the big one from this diary is that you get access to the bone crusher. With the hard tier, you only get 50% uh, experience, but this 
thing stacks with the catacomb effect so if you are using it in the catacombs you'll get prayer restoration while gaining prayer experience uh so it's it's pretty pretty damn good i use this thing all the time it almost everywhere i i go i have it with me you'll also get an antique lamp uh worth fifteen thousand experience uh, Robin will now offer you 26 buckets instead of 13 every day. This will give you 26 buckets of slime and 26 pots of bone meal in exchange for whatever tier of bone you're bringing to him. This is great for charging the bone crusher. It is one of the main reasons I do it every day so that I never run out of charges. You'll get double Mortmeyer fungi when casting bloom, which is nice for Iron Men. You'll get 50% more prayer experience from burning shade remains, which is nice if you're a collection logger. I don't think most people really touch Shades of Morton, but this place is actually not bad for both prayer and fire making experience while being profitable and the best place in the game to get elite clues if you're doing the gold remains. You'll also get an access to a shortcut across the estuary on most of the harmless. Uh, this is good. It saves you some time. Obviously, it's a shortcut, but it, it's not game breaking or anything. Uh, another big one is that you'll get 50% more runes from Barrow's chest, which makes it significantly more profit per hour if you're not getting any uniques. And you'll get 7.5% more Slayer experience in the Slayer Tower while on Slayer Task. As you can probably tell, I've been talking for like two hours and my voice is going, but we've still got some to do. Uh, I think this one goes in A. This is a pretty good one. This is a, a big diary. Uh, I think, again, I put it... I probably put it here i think like it, it has some good benefits um again i can't explain the deposit box it's just really good you have to trust me uh but this one is definitely worthwhile especially if you just do pvm if pvm is your thing getting 50 percent more runes from barrows will increase your profit by a crazy amount over time the bone crusher is really good the teleport to berg rod is useful in a lot of instances especially for clues is really nice yeah this is a good one this is a good one Next is the Varrock Hard Diary. This has a total level requirement of 567. Uh, the highest requirement is only 68 farming, which is kind of nice. Nothing really crazy here. Uh, Quest-wise, you'll have to do Desert Treasure 1. And for additional stuff, you'll need to get a full Skull Scepter and obtain 153 kudos, which will, again, probably be our annoying task for this section. The rewards for this diary are the Varrock Armor 3, this has the same 10% chance of mining two ores or smithing two bars all the way up to adamant for both. This can also be worn in place of a chef's hat to enter the Cook's Guild. Uh, the Cook's Guild is not super useful. Pretty cool spot for a uh, like a range if you want to do some cooking there, but there's no added benefit to it. Just the normal range buff. You'll get an antique lamp worth 15,000 experience. Zaf will now sell you 60 battle stabs every day for 7,000 coins. So this is a nice little money maker that you could do. I think that's about 50k profit per day for free if you do that. Uh, so not a bad idea to look into that. Uh, with the heart tier, you ac also get access to the Cook Skilled Bank, which is what I was talking about. It's just close to a range. It's kind of nice. Uh, I think the Rogue's Den would still be better as long as you have cooking gauntlets. I think you're fine. And the Skull Scepter will now hold up to 22 charges, and individual Skull Scepter parts will now give three bone fragments uh, when adding together for combined parts. Uh, this one, not good. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, yeah, it kind of goes in D. Uh, it's got, the only good thing really is the, the Battle Stabs as like a money maker, but you can get like 50k a day, so is it really worth anything? Um, I think as far as a hard diary goes, uh, it's probably the worst one. Uh, it's definitely not the worst diary overall, but I think I would put it just above the medium Karamja, um, of the medium desert diary, I think. I think that makes the most sense. It, it's a pretty bad diary, but it's like a, a, a building block to the elite tier. Next is the Western Provinces Hard Diary. This has a total level requirement of 784, with the highest skill requirement being 70 range, 70 cooking, 70 mining, and the big one is actually 75 thieving, with an honorable mention to 68 farming, 69 hunter, and 65 construction. The quest requirements are Swan Song and having completed the King Awawoge, part of Recipe for Disaster. The big ones are getting 300 Chompy kills, killing Zalra, and having started Morning's End Part 1. 
The rewards for this diary are the Western Banner 3, and this finally has a teleport, but it is one of the worst teleports in the game. It will give you one free teleport to the Piscatorus Fishing Colony. Uh, this is nice, but you can only use it once, and there's a fairy ring maybe 10 seconds away from it, so not a big deal. You'll get an antique lamp worth 15,000 experience. You now get the ability to upgrade the void uh, armor to elite void, which gives it a uh, plus three prayer bonus for a total of plus six. It also gives you a damage boost of 2.5% to both ranged and mage. Uh, so that is a pretty big one. Uh, lead void is very, very, very good for a lot of situations, especially when you're building your bank up. This is a very nice set to have. You get access to the locked room under the temple of uh, on Apatol. This, I think, just gives you the ability to make the blue monkey, funny blue monkey thing. <laughs> Not really anything cool, just a cosmetic. Uh, you get access to the private red Chinchampa area, which is nice for avoiding... Uh, bots that are just all over all the red chinchampas. You'll also get a hundred free ogre arrows, which is meh. Uh, and your teleport crystals can now hold up to five charges. But at this point, if you're using that, you'll probably want to get an eternal crystal, so no big deal. But what might be the best reward is the ability to get a crystal halberd. You can now use one of the best special attack weapons in the game until you have claws or a void waker. Crystal Halberd is very good for things like Corp, Theater of Blood, anything that has a big monster that you can hit multiple times with it. Uh, I think Elite Void is enough to make this one worthwhile. I think it actually deserves to go in A, probably above. Maybe it goes in S, if I'm being honest. Elite Void is really good. Crystal Halberd is really, really good. I think I will put it in S. I'll put it down here because it's not as big as going from no monastery teleport to teleport, but it's very, very good. And you should get a lead void if you can. It will fill in the gap in a lot of spots that you aren't aware of. The most annoying task for some might be killing Zulra because you haven't done a lot of PVM, but it is very doable and you'll eventually get the hang of it. But I think if I had to pick the most annoying task, it might be... Playing a game of veteran pest control because you need to get 100 combat. Or it would be having to mine adamant ore in Taronwin because of the 70 mining requirement. But most of these tasks look like they're all quest related. Uh, so yeah, you could just get through this as you progress your account anyway. And the last diary of the heart tier is the wilderness diary. Uh, I didn't write down the total level required for this, so I'll just give you all of the skill requirements. You need 66 magic, 67 hunter, 68 slayer, 64 agility, 75 smithing, and 53 fishing. Quest-wise, you'll need to complete Death Plateau and Mage Arena 1. You'll need to be able to kill the Chaos Elemental, the Chaos Fanatic, the Crazy Archaeologist, and Scorpion. You'll also need to have unlocked at least one of the three god spells, and this is done through Mage Arena 1 after you complete it. The reward for this is the Wilderness Sword 3, and with the Wilderness Sword 3, you finally get the teleport, which is a teleport directly to the Fountain of Rune. This is great for charging an inventory of glories, and you really would only need to charge one glory, maybe two a day, but you can do 28 in one trip. So this teleport is actually beneficial even if you only have just one. But it's kind of funny that nowadays as a main account, an uncharged glory is worth more than a charged glory. This is because we have brain rot and we need the eternal glory. So you're paying less for the opportunity to get a drop. It's very weird, but it is what it is. That's where we're at now. You also get the antique lamp for 15k experience. You'll get 50% more lava shards per lava scale, which is okay if you're an Iron Man. You'll get access to a shortcut on Lava Dragon Isle. This is good for escaping PKers. You'll also get access to another shortcut in the Lava Maze, which is again good for escaping PKers. You can get five ecumenical keys at a time, but like four, three, it's all kind of the same. As long as you can get two, that's pretty much all that matters. You can now get 30 random free runes from Lundale, but this is kind of pointless if you're not like 
desperate for runes or money. Most of the time you'll just get air runes, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but the big one is the ability to choose your destination when teleporting through ancient obelisks. This is very nice just for getting around the wilderness to exactly where you want to go without having to stand in the obelisk and wait until you get to the right destination. Uh, that would probably be my selling point for this diary, but you also get 50% off entry to the resource area. This is technically an escape. If you're at Scorpia, you can go in here and if the PKer doesn't have GP or the diary done, uh, they can't get in and you're safe. Plus now the wine of Zamorak found in the Chaos Temple in the Deep Wilderness Dungeon is uh, a note. So you get a noted form of it so you don't have to bank. Uh, this would have been a good moneymaker, but it's been destroyed by bots. So this one does not really matter. This is another good diary, but I don't think it's like a a huge must have. I think I would put it in B tier, kind of similar to the the other like hard diaries. It just kind of sits somewhere in the middle. The teleport is nice, but it's not game breaking. Plus a lot of the teleports in the wilderness are done through the ancient spell book. So not a big deal, but yeah, I think it just kind of goes somewhere in the middle. It's good to have if you can do it, but not that big of a change. And finally, we get onto the elite tier. This is the last tier of the achievement diaries. Here are all the requirements on screen and let's get into it. I might do this tomorrow. So if I sound different, you know why? First up, we got the Ardoin elite diary. You know, you'd think like these elite diaries have like a crazy total level requirement, but the total level requirement only really comes when you put them all together, right? So for the Ardoin Elite Diary, you need a total level of 829, with the highest requirement being 94 magic, but with a really honorable shout out to 90 agility, 91 smithing, 91 cooking, 81 fishing, 82 thieving, and 85 farming. With these, you also have to kind of take into effect that these numbers I'm giving you are only the requirements for the tasks in this tier but you'd have to combine it with the tasks in the previous tiers as well. The quest requirements are Desert Treasure 1 and Haunted Mine. Additionally, you'll need to get 800,000 Nightmare Zone points. The rewards for this one are the Ardoin Cloak 4, and this cloak has unlimited teleports to the farm patch. Uh, this is pretty nice. If you're doing herb runs, uh, this is just an additional, what, can you get five before? So now you can do more than five a day, but I don't really know if anyone's doing more than five a day. You'll also now get an antique lamp worth 50,000 experience for each one of these diaries that you complete. And this can be used on any skill above level 70. You'll get 250 free noted pure essence every day from wizard Gromperty, but again, 250 pure essence is literally 250 GP or about 15 seconds in the mine. It, it's not a good reward. You'll get 50% more fish from Fishing Trawler, but if you're doing this diary, you will never be doing Fishing Trawler at this point. You'll get 25% more Marks of Grace from the Ardoin Rooftop, which is very nice, especially because it is a requirement. So going from 90 to 99 here, you'll get 25% more Marks of Grace, therefore making you more money. It's a, This is the best part from this diary. You also now have the ability to have Bert automatically deliver 84 buckets of sand to your bank every day. Uh, this is kind of nice for a main account. It's not super important. If you're an Ironman who still needs to get 99 crafting, uh, this is a good way to passively stack sand, but uh, 84 a day is nothing really crazy. You can buy that much in about two minutes. And another thing, and the only other thing that you get is you can now hold a 140 coin pouches which is good for making thieving a little bit more AFK in quotation marks. You can just pickpocket for longer before you have to open them. Um, nothing from this diary is that great. Uh, I think it's just kind of nice little things. I think the big one is the Marks of Grace. Uh, that does make it substantially more profit going for 99. Uh, and the coin pouches are nice, but nothing really that game changing. I'm going to put this one at the top of B. Uh, there are two tasks here that you will probably find annoying. Uh, well, you'll probably find all of them annoying because they all have pretty high requirements. Uh, but the completing a lap of Ardoin Rooftop requires 90 agility. So that is a very long grind to get that task done. You can boost with the Summer Pie. So that is an option. Uh, and the other one is casting Ice Barrage on another player in Castle Wars. This requires 94 magic. 
but uh, you can boost from 85 with a Castle Wars Brew or 82 with the Saturated Heart. So two big tasks, but they can be completed uh, much earlier than expected. Next is the Desert Elite. This one requires 675 total level. The highest requirement is 95 fletching, which is very big. You'll also need 94 magic and honorable mention to 85 prayer and 85 cooking. Quest-wise, just Desert Treasure 1. You'll need a Calphite Queen Head, which is an RNG drop, but there is the option to get a Tattered one now. The Tattered Head is a guaranteed drop at on the uh, 256th fight queen kill so if you don't get lucky there is a chance that you will get this instead the reward for this is the desert amulet 4 this gives you unlimited teleports to narda and the calphite cave this is very good for doing calphite tasks with a cannon uh it's pretty nice i use it sometimes just to skip the narda teleport is very good because it saves you having to build the ornate pool in your house but the downside is you have to get a bunch of different requirements instead of just 83 construction or whatever it is. Uh, the upside is that it has no loading time for the POH, so it's technically faster. It overheals you to 106 if you're 99 hit points. Uh, it's it's pretty good. The, using that uh, the shrine is a viable solution or substitution, I guess is the better word, to the ornate pool. Uh, but this amulet also gives you 100% protection against desert heat, which is very nice. Uh, it's pretty niche because there's not a ton of stuff you do in the desert right now, but maybe in the future it'll have uh, more uses. Again, you'll get an antique lamp worth 50,000 experience. The Pharaoh Scepter can now hold 100 charges. You no longer have to pay for a Shanty Pass to get through Shanty Pass. You can just walk through for free. And you'll also get the Crevice Shortcut, which requires 86 agility in the Calphite layer. And this saves you a ton of time when going to Calphite Queen. Uh, this one is pretty good. I think I'm gonna put this one uh, just below the Karamja Gloves in A tier. Uh, a lot of these are very good. None of it is that really game changing. I think by the time you can do this, you'll already have the Ornate Pool. So it's not like, it's just a substitution. It's not really a replacement. Uh, the teleport is nice for clues, but there's other ways to get to the places you need to go. And Desert Heat is, there's not enough stuff to make that that worthwhile at this point. Plus we have like that water tiara now that holds water skin. So it's not even a big deal. Uh, the most annoying task for this one is probably very similar to the previous one where you need to cast Ice Barrage. Uh, you just have to cast it on anything in the desert. It cannot splash. Uh, and the other one is Fletching Dragon Darts, which require 95 Fletching. Uh, so that is a big requirement, but it, it's Fletching. It's fast. It's it's relatively profitable if you do uh, Longbows. So yeah, no, nothing really crazy for this one. Just high levels, really. And then I guess you could also include the KQ one, because if you do get unlucky and you have to get the Tattered one, that 250 kills is is a lot just for one task. But yeah, these are, these are all doable, just high levels, I think. Next is the Falador Elite Diary. I really like this diary. This is one of my favorites. The total level here is only 469, but it does have some high requirements being uh, 91 farming and 88 runecrafting, as well as 81 herb lore and 80 agility. A bunch of like high, high levels for like slow skills or expensive skills is pretty rough, but quest-wise it's only wanted and additionally, you'll need to get the rank of White Knight Master. No, you are not a Twitch mod. You must kill enough Black Knights to get this rank. For this diary, you'll get the Falador Shield 4. This gives you 100% Prayer Restore twice a day, which is very, very nice. Again, you'll get an Antique Lamp for 50,000 experience and any skill above 70. The Tree Patch in Falador will never get diseased, which is great because you no longer need to pay the farmer or use a compost in case you forget it. But on top of that, you'll also get an increased chance at receiving higher level ores when cleaning pay dirt. And you can now use the alternative amethyst mining spot, which is the one I used in my AFK amethyst video. And I am mistaken, and I'm gonna make a change in this. I'm going to move this shield up here because I did not know that you actually got the automatic mole locator with this one. I thought it came from uh, the other one, from the Elite tier. I thought this shield was the one that automatically tracked the mole for you, but it is now tier three, it appears. 
But this is still a very, very good diary to get done. Two full prayer restores for one inventory spot is very useful, especially for people who are wanting to try the Inferno. This will save you some inventory space. You can bring more food. That's kind of its whole selling point to me at this at this point in time. Like the Amethyst spot is nice, but the other one already exists. Uh, Motherload mine, higher ores don't really matter that much. It's not really a great money maker. And the tree spot is okay, but uh, ultra compost really does the trick anyway. So I'm just going to put this one in B. I'm going to put this one above. I'm actually going to put it in A just because of the, the prayer restore. Getting two 100% prayer restores in one inventory spot is very nice, especially when you're doing an activity you're not super comfortable with and you just want to save inventory space and be able to go longer. Next is the Fremenic Elite Diary. This one has a total level requirement of 551. Uh, no really crazy skills in this one, like no 90s. Uh, the highest requirement is actually 83 Slayer, but there are also the requirements of 82 Runecrafting, 80 Crafting, and 80 Agility, with a couple 70s for hit points, strength, and range. Quest-wise, you'll need to do the Fremenic Isles, Lunar Diplomacy, the Troll Stronghold. You'll also need to be able to kill all three Dagonoth Kings and defeat all of the God Wars Dungeon Generals. The rewards for this are the Fremenic Sea Boots 4. These boots now give you unlimited free teleports to Relica. Uh, this is really only handy for Vorkath or doing Dagonoth Kings if you don't have a teleport directly to Waterbirth Island, but at this point in time, you probably should. Uh, I think this teleport is also useful if you're doing Basilisk Knights. It's a nice teleport. Uh, and then, of course, you could go to Yatazo or Natizanot, but at this point in time, if your account is this progressed, you probably have an Enchanted Liar, so you won't really need it for that. Again, you'll get an Antique Lamp for 50k. Uh, when you kill a Dagonoth King, the bones will now come in Noted, which is huge for making those trips one longer and two way more profitable. The perk for this is also now that the Enchanted Liar can teleport you to uh, Yatazo and Nate is not. But again, there's not really a, too much point to go there aside from clues at this point in time. You get faster approval gain from Miscellanea, which is good for collection loggers because I guess on a main account, you're really only doing Miscellanea for bird eggs. If you're an Iron Man, it's kind of nice to get like ores, herbs. Uh, some logs even, uh, but this one not that great for a main account. And you no longer need a seal of passage to interact with anyone on Lunar Isle. I don't know if you've ever done that by accident. I did it before I did this diary where I talked to the wrong banker and I got kicked off the island. And there's now a return orb inside the bank on Lunar Isle, which will take you back to Relica instead of getting you kicked off like I just explained with the banker. Oh, this one is pretty good. I think the noted Dagonoth Bones is the big one. If you're at a point where you're doing elite diaries, doing a DK's task is probably something you've done before at least once or twice. Uh, the noted Bones make your trip just infinitely more profit. I think a Dagonoth Bone is like 8k each, and if you're doing 100 kills a trip, that's 800k just in bones. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good just for that. I think the boots are also important for doing Vorkath on like a really long scale. They don't make that much of a difference to setting your house in Relica, but having to change the location of your house to Relica and back and forth can be annoying. Uh, it's good, but it's not, not the end all be all. I'd probably put it in, in A again, uh, again above the, the light source, but below the, um, I'd probably actually put it above this because this, the prayer restore is good, but it's more niche than it is, uh, like getting bones, noted bones, or getting uh, the teleports to uh, to Relica. The most annoying task for this will definitely be different for a bunch of different people. Uh, some people might struggle with PVM, so getting all three kills. So getting a kill of all the DKs could be the hardest thing for you, but probably time-wise, I'd say it's either going to be crafting 56 Astrals at once, because that requires 82 rune crafting. Uh, I think someone told me in one of my comments not that long ago uh, that you could actually use the remnants of the eye for tasks like this. I don't know how true that is. I never tried it myself, but I believe it. It makes sense. Like if I put two and two together, that adds up. So maybe it's uh, completing a Relica rooftop lap at 80 agility. You could boost with a summer pie, but a lot of these seem very, very doable. Not gonna lie. After that one, we've got the Kandarin Elite Diary. This one requires a total level of 742, with the highest requirement being level 90 smithing, and an honorable shout out to 86 Herblore, 
85 crafting, 87 magic, and 85 fire making. Quest wise, you'll need to do the family crest, lunar diplomacy, and Taiwanai Trio. Outside of that, you'll need to have completed all the Barbarian training from Auto God Bless, and you'll need level 5 in all Barbarian Assault rules, which is definitely going to be the most annoying task uh, on the list. The reward for this is the Kandoran Headgear 4. This is now an unlimited teleport to Sherlock, which is very nice for doing any Sherlock steps, as well as getting to kind of a middle ground between uh, Catherby, Sears Village, and Ardoin. Uh, there's not really a ton of stuff here. It, it was a really nice teleport for forestry, if I'm being honest. Uh, I use it sometimes when I do a bats slayer task, when I'm doing point boosting. Uh, but other than that, it's just kind of a niche teleport that's used for clue scrolls. Again, you'll get your antique lamp for 50,000 experience. The price of enchanted battle stabs is now 20k instead of 30k, but I'm going to be honest, I don't think I've ever used that. The price for turning a Zamorakian spear to a Zami Hasta is now halved to 150k instead of 300k. Uh, the first 200 coals placed in coal trucks every day will automatically be transported to your bank. That's kind of nice. Again, I don't think I've ever used it, but uh, that is something you can do apparently. The Flax Keeper will exchange 250 noted flax for 250 noted bowstring. Again, that could be a moneymaker, but I think bowstring is fairly cheap nowadays. And the last reward is a 15% increased chance to save a harvest life from the Catherby herb patch. So a little bit of money making, a niche teleport. I think this is one of the weaker elite diaries, uh, but it, it exists, it's there. Uh, I would probably put it in B below the um, Ardoin Cape. Yeah, I'd put it in B below the Ardoin Cape. It's, it's just, it is what it is. There's like a handful of tasks here that could be considered annoying. Maybe like smithing a rune Hasta, it requires 90 smithing. Uh, you could boost for this. Mixing stamina mix on top of Sears Village requires 86 herb lore, which is kind of big, but again, you could boost a little bit. Uh, I definitely think the longest and probably most annoying one, especially if you're playing on world 306 or whatever the Barbarian Assault world is, is getting level five in all, all the roles. That can be a very annoying task. Uh, so if you have people to play Barbarian Assault with, I highly recommend it, but that's a rough one. I'm sorry if you got to do that. Next is the Karamja Elite Diary. This one, again, very weird. It only has a total level requirement of 292. The big requirements are 91 runecrafting, 87 herblore, and 72 farming. There are no quest requirements, but you will need to own either a fire cape or an infernal cape. The reward for this is the Karamja Gloves 4. This gives you unlimited teleports to Duradel, which is very nice for getting a Slayer task. Duradel is very commonly used for getting like boss Slayer tasks, but eh, more niche depending on your playstyle, I guess. But I think PVM is probably one of the biggest communities in the game right now. You'll get your Antique Lamp. Surprisingly, this one is worth 50k, which is equivalent to all the other ones. Uh, you'll have a 10% chance of receiving two Agility Arena tickets instead of one, uh, but this is kind of uncommon and not really that important. It's good for post 99 agility XP or doing some collection logging, but I think most average players won't really take full advantage of this. You'll get free usage of the Shiloh Village Furnace. This is good for making cannonballs, especially if you're like an Iron Man. I think most people when doing smithing don't really even make bars. They either do, they make bars at Blast Furnace or they smith the bars into something that they've bought on the GE or they do uh, Giant's Foundry at this point. Like, Furnace is kind of dead content. You'll now get free cart rides from, I can't pronounce that guy's name, but the guy near the dock in Brimhaven will take you to Shiloh Village, and I guess vice versa. You get free access to the Hardwood Grove, which again is kind of dead content now because there's better places to cut uh, teaks and mahoganies at this point in time. You get access to the stepping stone shortcut leading from red dragons uh, in the Brimhaven dungeon. Uh, I'm trying to think in my head if I ever use this. I don't really think I have. I don't really go to Brimhaven dungeon that often. Uh, red dragons in the Brimhaven dungeon will drop noted red dragon hide. Uh, again, I don't think I've ever killed a red dragon in here. The only time I've killed a red dragon was in the catacombs or under the mist guild, I think. But I guess if you're a red dragon guy, you could go there. A uh, pretty nice one is 
the metal dragons, like the bronze, iron, and steel dragons down there will drop their respective bars uh, noted. I can see this having some benefit, maybe for steel bars, but I just think there's so many better ways to get these now that this doesn't really matter that much. You'll get one free resurrection per day in the fight cave. So this is the fire cape. Uh, so if you're trying to do your fire cape and you troll against Jad and get KO'd, uh, you'll have a second chance. Uh, this resurrection does not work in the inferno, thankfully. Uh, but yeah, you'll get another chance on your fire cape run if you're doing a slayer task or something. You'll also get double the toggle from the fight caves inferno and the uh, Tizar Ket Rek challenges, which is like the multi jad challenges. Uh, so this one not as good as the previous tier. I think that deposit box is a pretty pretty big unlock for a lot of people. Uh, so I'm gonna put this one just above the Kandoran headgear solely for the teleport to Duradol for getting uh, like boss layer tasks and just generic slayer tasks, as well as that pretty nice resurrection in case you make like a stupid mistake when you're killing Jad or something. But uh, overall, it's kind of pretty similar to the Kandoran headgear where it has like a niche teleport for one activity. Uh, and if you take advantage of it, you really like it. But if you don't use it, it's kind of pointless. The hardest task for this one is definitely making 56 nature runes at once. Uh, this requires level 91 runecrafting. You can boost, and I don't know if the remnants of the eye would work for this, but I'm sure somebody does. The note I have says that the remnants of the eye won't affect the level, but it will affect the amount of essence you bring. So I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. But another one is getting a fire cape might be hard for some people if you got the jad hands. Uh, and then an anti-venom while standing in the horseshoe mine. This is an 87 herb lore requirement. There's only five tasks for this diary, so it, it's definitely, definitely doable, but it will take some time. Next up, we've got the Koren in Kevo's diary. This one is kind of funny. <laughs> uh, it requires 732 total level with the highest requirement being level 95 Slayer. That is to kill the alchemical Hydra, but you'll also need uh, 90 magic, 90 wood cutting, 85 farming and 82 fishing and 84 cooking. There are no quest requirements. The additional requirements for this are funny because you actually need less than 100% for Hasidius, but you need 100% favor for the hard diary. So it's it doesn't matter. You already have 100%. So these are not even additional requirements. You'll also need to defeat Scotizo. The rewards for this are the Rada's Blessing 4, which gives you unlimited teleports to Mount Karoom. This is very nice for getting a Konar Slayer task, doing Hydra, killing worms, everything I said before. This blessing also gives you an 8% chance to catch two fish at once everywhere when equipped, but you do not get additional experience. I used this in my Karambuan video, which is very nice for catching Karambuanji. Uh, those have a unique property where when you catch one, you catch 20. So if you double that, you actually get 40. Uh, this blessing is also very good at places like Sacred Eels and Infernal Eels. Uh, but a lot of places where you catch normal fish, uh, you don't really use it because it cuts into your XP over your GP. And this blessing is the one that actually gives you the additional plus one prayer bonus. So now it has a total of plus two, making it the best in slot prayer item for the blessing slot. The Ash Sanctifier now grants you 100% experience over the 50% it did for the hard tier. You'll also get 20 Slayer points for a Konar task over the 18 that it originally was. You have a 10% reduced burn chance at City Kitchens, which is very, very nice. That's like the range buff. You get 80 free dynamite a day from Thyrus. This is actually a pretty decent moneymaker. And if you've ever been in the Karoom Slayer dungeon, you know you have to wear boots of stone or brimstone or granite boot. Granite what? Granite boots. Uh, but with the Elite Diary, you can now just wear whatever boots you want. This is really nice for bringing Pagasians to Hydra. On top of that, you'll also get 10% additional blood runes from Blood Rune Crafting in Great Karend. Uh, you don't get additional experience, but this is pretty good for making a little bit more money. And the tanning price for Odin in the Fourth Host Dungeon is down from the 40% from the hard tier all the way to 20% of his default price. So this is a pretty good diary. Uh, they did a very good job when they added this in. They gave it a lot of benefits, a lot of rewards. This is one of the better elite diaries and I'm gonna put it at the top of A. 
It is not that game changing in a sense, but it gives you good stuff like the Ash Sanctifier, which is very nice for getting those like last couple prayer levels while you're training Slayer. The additional Slayer points are very nice when you're trying to get um, like any of the rewards from the Slayer shop. The burn reduction is a very nice when you're training cooking. A uh, good money maker in dynamite and being able to wear pagasians for hydra is also a nice little bonus the most annoying task for this one is definitely killing a hydra in the karoom slayer dungeon because you need 95 slayer you could boost with a wild pie but even with that it is still a very very high requirement uh so that is definitely my pick uh, some could say maybe cutting a redwood 90 wood cutting is also a pretty high requirement but I, I think the Hydra task is going to take you much longer. Moving on, we go to Lumbridge and Draenor Elite. This one has a total level requirement of 543. The highest requirement is level 88 smithing with honorable mentions to 76 runecrafting, 78 thieving, 70 agility, and 75 woodcutting. Uh, the big requirement for this one is that you need a quest cape. Uh, so the skill total that I give you does not include all the requirements like requirements for quests, but you will need a quest cape for this one. And that that's pretty much all the requirements there. I have nothing in my additional and the quest requirements is obviously completing all of them because you need to do the quest cape emote. The reward for this one is the Explorer's Ring 4. This gives you 100% run energy three times a day, which is a very nice little thing if you're doing something that requires a lot of running around. And the ring will also now let you cast High Alchemy 30 times with no runes. Uh, this doesn't give you any experience, but it is nice to bring this anywhere where you're alking. So if you're doing a Slayer task or a boss task, something that drops alchemals and you want to keep your inventory clean and have all that space for food and prayer pots, this is a pretty nice uh, item to bring. Again, you'll get the 50,000 experience lamp at any skill above 70. You'll get a 20% discount on items from the Call the Mancer's chest. Uh, at this point, you should probably have your Barrow's Gloves, so this doesn't really apply to you that much. It could be nice if you're an Iron Man and you're buying some grapes or something, uh, but this chest, I, I don't think I ever use this chest anymore. I'd only use it to buy Barrow's Gloves if I absolutely had to, uh, but I'm sure maybe somebody's got a use for it, but I personally do not. Uh, one of the big ones is that you no longer need to use a Draymond Staff to use a Fairy Ring. This means that any activity you're doing that you get to or from with a fairy ring, you get an extra inventory spot. This ties back into the thing I said probably about an hour and a half ago, that when we look at buffs like this, it's not about a one-time use. Saving one inventory space is not that big, but when you kill a boss 3,000 times, that extra inventory space can be 3,000 times one inventory space. So it's a pretty big buff to not to get that extra inventory space and not have to bring the Draymond Staff. And the only other unlock is the sixth log slot for, or sorry, the sixth block slot for Slayer tasks. Uh, it's nice to have an extra block slot, but it's not crazy of an unlock. It's it's just something nice to have. Uh, the most annoying task for this is definitely the quest cape. There are a lot of quests, uh, especially with Desert Treasure 2 coming out now. You're going to have to sweat away and kill those four bosses. Uh, but this one is very doable. All the other requirements are pretty low. So this is one you could definitely get done at some point in time. It might even be your first Elite Diary completed. Uh, I think this ring is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the best elite but it's it's definitely up there i think i would put it above the elite desert amulet uh so it, it, it's up near like towards the top it's pretty good the fourth last one is the mauritania elite diary this one is another good diary that i would recommend uh i like it for some oddly specific reasons but i will try to be not biased when i rank it the total level requirement is 660 the highest requirement is level 96 fishing. You have to catch a shark with your bare hands. Uh, honorable mention to 85 slayer, 84 crafting, 80 fire making, 83 magic. Uh, just some like other sparing like 70 requirements in your combats. Quest wise, you need to complete in aid of the Meyer key, lunar diplomacy, and shades of Morton. You'll also need to complete the barbarian training and fishing so you can catch that shark and you will need to loot a barrow's chest while wearing any complete barrow set so if you're an iron man that's a little bit more tricky you'll need rng to be on your side but if you're a main account you'll just have to shell out 
like two mil for a set. The rewards for this one are the Mauritania Legs 4. This gives you unlimited teleports to the slime pit beneath the Ecto Fontis. This is nice for gathering slime, but at this point in time, you can probably get by by just claiming your free bones and slime from Robin, who now offers you 39 free buckets and pots of bone meal every day uh, in exchange for the tier of bones that you bring in. You'll also get your standard 50,000 experience skill lamp for any skill above 70. You'll get 50% more fire making experience when burning shade remains. Uh, this is nice when you're going for clue scrolls or trying to do some collection logging. Uh, the one that I like the most is that the Bone Crusher now grants full prayer experience. Uh, again, I take this thing everywhere. If you combine the Bone Crusher with the Dragon Bone Necklace, you actually get one of the more defensive necklaces that you can wear and it will restore your prayer even when you're not in the catacombs. That is not a unique diary reward, it's just something you can do with this diary reward. Uh, the Elite tier also gives you access to the Herb Patch on Harmony Island, so an additional Herb Patch is just more money every day. And finally, you'll be getting 10% more Slayer experience in the Slayer Tower. This is a pretty good one. I don't think it competes with the Kebos one. The Kebos one is quite good, and I do think I would still put that deposit box from the Karam Jahard above this, but I think I would put it above the, the Lumbridge Ring. Uh, it's pretty good. It's not the best one but it is it is one of the one of the better elite diaries for sure next up is the varrock elite diary the varrock elite diary has a total level requirement of 536 the highest skill requirement is 95 cooking but honorable mention to 90 herb lore and 89 smithing quest wise you'll need to do dream enter rune mysteries and the tourist trap that is three different levels of quest it's a, a pretty long one, one of the shortest quests in the game, and then a mid-tier. Interesting. The reward for this is the Varrock Armor 4. This gives you a 10% chance of mining two ores, and this does include Amethyst, so this is very nice for some money making. I used it in my AFK 9 to 5 Amethyst video. Uh, this play body also gives you the chance of smelting two of any type of bar uh, when using the Edgeville Furnace, and it acts as a prospector jacket for the purpose of experience bonuses, and even clue scrolls. You'll get an antique lamp that grants you 50,000 experience in any skill above 70. Zaf will sell you 120 battle stabs every day for 7,000 coins each. This is a profit of about 100k per day. So if you're on a bond, that's one mil towards your bond every 14 days. Sorry, it's about 1.4 mil towards your bond every 14 days. And the Skull Scepter will now hold up to 26 charges, which I think is dumb and they should make that go upwards of 300. I hate having to refill that after 26 teleports. I just want to do some clues. Uh, and alongside that, uh, it's been like increasing every tier. So the Skull Scepter parts now give four extra bone fragments uh, when combining with other parts. This one, uh, again, is pretty weak. The Varrock Diary is pretty weak. I don't think I can really put this above C tier. I think the Amethyst thing is very nice for some money making alongside Zaf. 50k XP in a lamp is just standard, but it's still pretty nice. Uh, I think this one goes in the top of C for now. It's, it's just, it's the Varrock Diary is pretty weak. Uh, there probably needs some kind of buff to it, but I don't think we'll see it anytime soon. The most annoying task is probably baking a summer pie in the Cook's Guild. This requires 95 cooking, which is uh, pretty big. Uh, but other than that, maybe crafting 100, rune, uh, 100 earth runes simultaneously. Uh, but this one, you can definitely boost with the Raiments of the Eye. So I think it can be done at like 52 rune crafting, 53 maybe, uh, if you have at least like two pieces of the, the outfit. Uh, I mean, the only other one would probably be creating the super combat in Varrock West Bank which has a 90 herblore requirement, which is pretty steep for a pretty, pretty bad diary. And then we get to the second last one, the Western Provinces Elite Diary. This should be called the Hardcore Iron Man Saber Diary. <laughs> uh, this one has a total level requirement of 706, with the highest requirement being 93 Slayer. Uh, honorable mention to 85 Fletching, 85 Thieving, and 85 Agility. 
quest wise you'll just have to complete morning's end part one but the big one here is that you'll need to do 1000 chompy kills which is quite a few and you'll also need any complete void set which you should have let's be honest the rewards for this one are the western banner 4 this now gives you unlimited teleports to the Piscatoris fishing colony. Again, I think this is one of the worst teleports for any diary reward. There's a fairy ring right next to it that is closer to Kraken, which is what I think you would use this teleport for. I guess it could be nice if you want to fish some monkfish, but uh, if you're doing an elite diary and you're fishing monkfish, I can't help you. I'm sorry. Again, you'll get an antique lamp worth 50,000 experience. Uh, two chompy birds will appear every single time when chompy bird hunting. Once you complete this diary, you can now receive the chompy chick as a pet. Uh, and that's a pretty common pet that I think most people go for because it's it's fairly easy. It's fairly quick to get. I think it's the fastest pet in the game. Uh, after completing the diary, slayer points uh, from Neve or Steve are increased to match those of Duradel, which is pretty nice. Uh, Steve and Neve are also pretty good for boss tasks, so it's not a bad option to use them uh, either. You'll get 150 free ogre arrows from Rance, but I'm sure if you finish this diary, you never want to see an ogre arrow ever again. And the hardcore Iron Man part of this diary is that you'll get one free resurrection per day when fighting Zolra. So if you're fighting Zolra and you troll and die, it doesn't count. You're just still alive. This is very useful for Ultimate Iron Man because if they do die, they can just stop doing Zolra for the day and try again tomorrow. So this one's okay. It's definitely not like that huge step up it is like uh, from getting Elite Void, but the resurrection is nice. The extra Slayer points are nice. The Chompy Chick Chance is very nice. I think it's like kind of in the middle of the pack. I think it has some more like standard uses compared to niche uses like the Falador shield uh, and for that reason I'm gonna put it just above the Falador shield and finally the very last one of this long ass video the wilderness elite diary this one has a total level requirement of 895 the highest requirement is 96 magic with honorable mentions to 90 smithing 90 cooking 85 fishing and mining and 84 thieving. Quest-wise, it's only Desert Treasure 1, and additionally, you'll need to be able to kill Callisto, Venonatus, and Vedion. The rewards for this diary are the Wilderness Sword 4. This gives you unlimited free teleports to the Fountain of Rune. This is a clue spot, so it's nice for that. Uh, it's good for charging Amulets of Glory. I think going for the Eternal Glory is actually like some absurd amount of GP per hour right now. It's like five mil per hour, which is kind of dumb, but, uh, that is something you could do if you really wanted to. You'll get your antique lamp for 50,000 experience. You get free entry into the resource area, which is a great escape when you're doing Scorpia. Uh, all dragons in the wilderness will drop noted bones. Uh, this doesn't include the King Black Dragon because he's technically not in the wilderness. You'll get 50 random runes from Lundile every day. But again, I don't think I've ever done this. And you'll get an increased dark crab rate. This one kind of disappointing for a diary the teleport to the fountain rune is nice i use that fairly often especially when i'm like in a clue type of mood uh, i guess it's also a nice teleport for callisto i think that's where that teleports you to but the teleport to anna carl is probably just fine or the obelisk is also probably just fine i guess you could alk at the fountain rune but like who does that uh yeah this one kind of lackluster not really anything super important uh i think it goes in b it kind of has some niche clue stuff just like the candor and headgear uh but yeah i think i would put it here just for the the escape in the wilderness is kind of nice if you're doing scorpia niche boss uh and then it's other like niche uses and that is the old school runescape achievement diary tier list was it a good use of what i'm going to assume is like two and a half or three hours i'm gonna have to cut this video up so much regardless i hope it kept you entertained i hope you've been scaping the whole time getting some gains i appreciate you watching the whole thing because i'm sure about two percent of people will probably do that Thank you to my YouTube channel members, Snacks, Jujo, and iTalk. I appreciate you guys. My throat hurts, but I've got nothing left to say, so I'll see you in the next one.